Hi, Stan Craig. We're back again with a weekly webinar. And this time, uh, it, this is the follow-up, as I mentioned before, the 4th of July holiday. We're going to talk about a living trust and why that's really important. I'm looking at a full-page ad in our Jacksonville newspaper, Free Living Trust Seminar. And you're going to be seeing these everywhere. Why? Because there's a silver tsunami coming at you. What does that mean? That means trillions of dollars are going to be passing from one generation to another, from a wealthier generation to one that may be less wealthy. And many people are concerned about how these things work. And as people age, they become more and more concerned. Your clients are going to need to know this information. And they're going to see ads like this, Free Living Trust Seminar. This is a, a full page ad in the um, Times Union from Florida. And it just says at the seminar, you're going to learn the advantages and disadvantages of living trust, how to protect your estate and maintain your privacy if you become incapacitated, how to create a plan to protect your assets before you need long-term care, how to avoid losing your home and assets to growing nursing home costs, why putting property in your children's name may be a mistake, how to plan your estate to make sure it passes to your loved ones efficiently, how to protect your children's inheritance. And then he lists six places throughout the city. This guy also runs an ad saying, we will do a living trust for you for $395 for your family, $495 for the basic trust. That's the kind of thing that's happening all across the US because this topic makes sense. And people understand they don't know what these guys are talking about. And people want to be informed. So most of us understand that what you don't know can hurt you. It can really be difficult. You know, um, my father and my brother both passed away. They were smokers. They knew that smoking was probably not the best. But I don't think they expected to kill them. When my brother was in the hospital and someone came in, he'd say, do you have a pack of cigarettes? And they'd say, well, sure, Ron, aren't you getting treatment? He'd say, throw those things away. Look what they did to me. You become a true believer because sometimes you're not really sure is what they say true. How money works and how money does not work is really important. And one way that people can be informed is when it comes to living trust. Why do you think he runs a full page ad about free living trust seminar? You could do the same. We can, <laughs> we can provide for you uh, slides. In fact, some of these I'm using today about a living trust. So let's chat about that. Uh, and, and the first response that you have, the same thing that I have every time something new is, comes up is, wait a second, wait a second, Stan. There's too much to know already. Ah, my gosh, there's just too much to know. And I'm overwhelmed with all the things there are to know especially being a financial advisor. Do you know how many different things there are I need to understand? Well, of course I do, right? I sat in your seat. For 27 years, I did what you do. I served clients in financial services. Uh, I was able to manage those who were serving clients. I worked directly with clients. I did seminars here and around the world. I know exactly what you're doing, and I understand how easy it is to be overwhelmed. And that's why a plan is really important with goals. I'm going to learn this, I'm going to learn that. And I hope net law is one of those things you learn. Because if you've heard me say before, this is the foundational account to build business. This allows you to profile, to ask questions about every client that you need to know to be of service to them. And that you can ask without being nosy, without prying, without being uncomfortable. Because the family vault gives you the opportunity to ask the questions. And this net law is inexpensive, easy to get in, easy for clients to understand, and it provides immediate benefits to them as well as to you. So don't be too overwhelmed. I know sometimes I can't talk about a living trust because I'm unprepared. I have no idea what this is. I know you get one, but I don't know what it is. Well, I'm trying to help you be prepared. I'm all out of time. Do you know how many hours a day I have? Uh, same as you, right? 24 hours a day. Well, how many days a week? I have the same as you, seven days a week. I have the 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes. I have the same, we all have the same time and we're all out of time. So that's the reason we have to set priorities. And I hope that you'll make these weekly visits together a priority.
I think it's really important simply because I'm here to help you. <laughs> you know, I'm not here for any other reason. I'm here to help you. Hopefully you'll find a way to give us time every week and learn these things as we walk through them. Pulled in too many directions. Oh my gosh. Are you a dad? Are you a husband? Oh my gosh. Do you have another job? Do you have a house to take care of, a yard to take care of? Do you have a car to maintain? Do you have trips to plan? Do you have bills to pay? We are all pulled in too many directions. Too many. That's why some things get done and some things don't. The things that we need to get done are the things that's going to have a direct impact on our family, right? And that's why your theme of no family left behind is critical. How many works is critical. My ability to provide for my family, for their health care, for their financial well-being, for their education, my ability to feed my children, to clothe my family, my ability to provide for them means I have to focus on what's going to create revenue. And frankly, I hope we can help you be pulled in the direction and you can see how we can help you do that. I'm tired. <laughs> Don't you? Uh, listen. How many of you say, Stan, I'm worn out already just listening to you? <laughs> just, I'm worn out, brother. Listen, I know what that's like. I got in to Louisville last night, a little after one o'clock. Couldn't find a car because of things going on in town. Came early this morning for a meeting, so I know what it's like to be tired. Thank goodness you can't see me. <laughs> because I think you could tell with one look that that guy looks worn out. I'm not sure this will benefit me. There's a question, isn't it? Even with all those things, if I make things a priorities, if I think I'm going to go, I'm still not sure how this is going to benefit me. Listen, this knowledge that we're trying to share with you has a direct benefit, number one, for your family, right? No family left behind includes your family, so it's important for your family. The other thing that's critical, however, is that you have to know that this is going to be a benefit, not just to you, but to your clients. I mean, that's really important. Then the other thing is this, imagine what things that you said, I don't have time, I can't learn, I'm not going to worry about. It. Just imagine that you didn't know what to eat or what to drink. Suppose you didn't understand that, you know, simply eating Subway sandwiches all your life can turn you into something that the public hates. I mean, suppose you didn't know that having an alcohol in the morning is probably not a bad idea. Suppose you didn't know what it really costs to buy a cell phone or a cell phone service, or you didn't know the price of a shirt or socks. I mean, suppose you didn't know who to trust. Suppose you didn't know what to believe. Suppose you didn't know how to make decisions. Golly, there's some things that we ought to know. And these are just basics. I mean, we have to teach our kids, no, we don't have chewing gum for breakfast. We don't eat gummy worms for breakfast. Um, no, you're not supposed to drink that. That is a beverage that can harm you. We, we need to be able to know. And children have to be able to trust us. And hopefully you, you will learn to trust that what we're trying to do is we're here to help. That's it. And that's what you want your clients to know. The client says, wait, I don't have time to know all this. So listen, there's some things you ought to know. And how money works and how money does not work is one of those things. Dave Ramsey, you've all heard of Dave Ramsey. Uh, Dave has a huge business. I've been to his offices in Nashville, visited with him and his, his uh, campus. Oh my gosh. Dave understands how money works. He's making a lot of it. But here's what he said. Money's like a beautiful thoroughbred horse. It's very powerful and always in action. Money moves. It, it's never still. But unless that horse is trained when he's very young, he'd be out of control and a dangerous animal when it grows to maturity. Why is that important? Because what you do is teach people how money works. It's critical. But if you don't learn it when you're younger, you wind up being poor. You wind up not knowing what to do. I mean, the very basics of money is you spend less than you earn, and then your capital grows. Some people don't get that. You can't borrow your way out of debt. Oh my gosh, that's basic, right? Some people don't know that. If you don't learn these things when you're younger, by the time you reach maturity, you'll be dependent upon handouts, government programs to get you through. Nobody wants that. But that's what's happened to about 70% of America. 
dependent upon others, handouts, charity, and the government. That's because they didn't learn how money worked. As an advisor, you have a wonderful job and a great responsibility. You want to understand how money works. That's really important. And as this job, you get to learn it and you want to share it with others. And then you know what can ruin your plans. And there's lots of things out there that can ruin your plans, right? Lots of things. For example, I was going to rent a car. I had no idea that they had 800 basketball teams for AEU that sucked up every car within miles. I had no idea there's a NASCAR race and sucked up every car. You got to know what's out there before. And I wish I'd thought about it and made my plans to rent my car, you know, weeks ago. But for you, how many works is important. <sighs> Let me just tell you, one of the best things about being a financial advisor is I learned how many work for me. I learned what to do. Uh, what I shared with clients are things that I try to do myself. How many works is important, but how it does not work is an opposite truth, right? How it doesn't work is an opposite of what it does do, but you need to know that equally important. So you avoid what doesn't work. Let's talk about that. Here's one example. NetLaw offers a family living trust. Why? Because without it, you can find your future plans ruined for your family. Ruined for your family. You know I came to NetLaw from my experience with my brother passing away without any documents done. Then I wrote the book called Four Talk. Um, because I wanted others to know how money works. If you don't know, it can be terrible. And it ruined my brother's family and his plans because he was not prepared. So our living trust is called a revocable living trust. Well, that sounds creepy. Why do I want it revocable? If I have a trust, why do I want it to be able to revoke it? Your client's going to say revocable by whom? Well, let me show you. Here's my friend Susie Orman. I, I worked for uh, with Susie for a year at TD Ameritrade. Uh, spend some time with her, and this is one thing she said over and over and over again. Of all the documents I've talked about, of all you've heard me mention on TV or in any book, a revocable living trust is is the document I most often said is indispensable. It's one of the most important documents you can have to protect yourself. Many people have seen Susie Orman for years and years and years. They've read her books. She's very popular. She's just done a great job. Now Susie has taken retirement and enjoying that, which was one of her goals. And she is enjoying it, I can tell you, because she's done all this stuff. So if your client says, why do I need that? Listen, this is indispensable, one of the most important documents you can have to protect yourself. So what is it? Tell me what it is. That's what your clients want to know. And frankly, it's what you want to know. It's not enough to say, well, we have one. What is it? A revocable living trust states that who controls your assets while you're living. And for most of us, that's ourselves, right? We're going to control our assets while they're in the trust. We're going to be the trustee. I'll show you language later. We'll say my wife and I, Gloria and I, Stanley L. Craig, Gloria Craig are trustees for Craig Family Trust. And in that trust, you say, what's going to happen to your assets when you're gone? Do you know why this is important? Listen, when you're gone, no one knows what your thoughts were unless you write them down. We've said that a hundred times. When you're incapacitated, nobody knows what you wanted because you didn't write it down. That's what the whole documents of net all package is about. That's why people pay five, seven, ten thousand dollars to get the documents done we're talking about. And you're offering it to your clients at a supremely discounted deal. Why? Because you can through your firm and through your services. Revocable trust because you can change it at any time. Isn't that great? You can go back and change it. You have control of what's in that. It's living because you create it while you're alive revocable living and trust because you entrust this document with your property, a revocable living trust. That's what it is. Well, the next question is the why question. Remember, we've always said, you've heard me say again a hundred times, 
If you can't answer the why question, everything else doesn't matter. What, when, where, who? No, the question is why are we doing this? Because without a revocable living trust, courts can review, publicize, and decide the disposition of your assets and then charge you fees to do that. Charge you fees to do it. Wait a minute. How'd you like to not pay fees? Get the trust done. How'd you like to not have more money taken out of your estate by people you don't know to provide services you don't want? How would you like that? You do that when you establish these trusts. That's why you need it. You don't want anybody else messing in your stuff. None of us do, especially when you're not there to defend yourself. The other thing, you avoid the courts and probate and your assets pass directly to the people you want them to have and without a probate court. I just had a good friend pass away in Louisville, a wonderful guy. First thing his son did is said, Mom, we gotta get these assets back out of here because they're gonna be locked up for years. That's what you don't want. You don't want things tied up for years as ownership is decided, as your attorneys work through things. You want to be able to have that trust so it works simply and easily whenever it's needed. Well, people say, well, what is an estate? You know, I don't have an estate. An estate sounds like a lovely house in Newport Beach, California, and there are some there. It sounds like living in Rancho Santa Fe in San Diego. Great place. Sounds like having a ski resort in Boozman, Montana, or a beautiful seaside villa in Miami. Well, that is an estate, but that is not what we're talking about here, friends. This is what we're talking about. Your estate is the total of your financial interest, the total of your financial interest. Let me just tell you, as you I've said again, if you've got stuff, people are gonna want it. If you have stuff, it has some value. Unless you're like me and I got a house full of stuff with no value, right? Why? Because my wife keeps everything. By the way, I hope she's not listening to this <laughs> because uh, she holds on to more things than I would ever hold on to. The total of your financial interest, and that includes all your money, every cash in your cash account, all the cash that you have, anywhere that's recorded, every bit of uh, liquid assets. That's what it includes, but not just that. It includes all property, your home, your retirement accounts, all of your property. Everything that you own is included in an estate plan. And that means your insurance policies. One of the first things that many of us do when we're married is get life insurance. One of the first things you want your clients to do is do what? Get life insurance. The worst thing you can do, Dad, is insure your car and not insure yourself. My gosh, the most important thing you have in your house is you, not that car. So you need to have insurance policies. They're included in your state. Stocks. Most of us have done some investing at some time. We bought some from Amazon and said, how much does a share of Amazon cost? We, we logged on to Google and we said, how much does a share of Google cost? We, we stopped at a local store or a Safeway and said, how much is a share? You, you can own any business in America by buying a share of stock. And we've talked about that. We've talked about how the direct reinvestment dividends works, direct reinvestment plans work, drip plans. Stocks are important and hopefully you're showing your folks how Money can grow over time with mutual funds and bonds and all those other things that we know about, partnership that you're in. It's always amazing how many people that you know are in a partnership, some sort of partnership and some sort of business venture, some sort of land ownership, all that's included and it's important. So what's required if you have a revocable living trust? Well, all your assets are owned by the trust which is really interesting. That means they're set aside in a specific place where they are protected and where their use is clearly defined. All the titles in your house, in your car, your 401ks, they have to be in the name of the trust. And at your death, ownership passes to the trust, directly to the trust, avoids probate, avoids the judges, avoids the courts. The trust 
makes it simple to pass assets on your heirs just as you want. And all assets you want to go to the trust, you have to retitle. It sounds like it's a pain, but let me just tell you, after you're gone, somebody's going to have to do this. And while you're here now, it's not that complicated or difficult to do. And especially if you have significant assets, this needs to be done. That's what's required. A revocable living trust takes all of your assets, all of your estate, and they're retitled. So at your death, they pass into the trust. While you're living, you control. After you pass, your trust controls it. And it controls them very specifically. So what should a living trust say? I mentioned this earlier. Really, this is not something that, um, that you need to worry about talking to your clients because the net loss smart guides take care of this for you. But for example, it would say Mr. John Doe and Mary Ann Doe as trustees of the Craig Family Trust and the um, Gloria Family Trust, Revocable Living Trust do create this. Now, the creation date's important because when you sign this in front of a notary, this becomes you underdated. This means this is the legal date for your trust. And that's the number used for the legal date. Under trust dated this period of time. So that's important. And the number used for the trust, the date of your trust is what you use every time you retitle an asset. Tax ID number, not complicated, just your social security number. Now all this is built in to the NetVault platform. It makes it so simple and easy for clients. I love this cartoon. <laughs> I think it's great. Isn't it amazing how quickly they part? And that's what happens. Oh my gosh. This happens to people all the time and they do part. You've heard that saying, a fool and his money are soon parted. Whether it's at the casino, whether it's a racetrack, whether it's a bad business deal, a stupid investment, a scam, wow. And people are always wanting to part you from your money. Listen, net law and a revocable living trust make those lines come together. <laughs> You keep your money, no matter how foolish you may have been, once you understand how money works. So what's the trust do? I read you some of the things in this full page ad, but I just want to go over these things really quickly. One, it avoids the time and expense of probate when you die. I'm going to come back and talk about that in just a minute. It avoids multiple probates if you own assets more than one state. For many of us who live in Florida, we also own property in other states. We have um, other homes, other things, other family plans. Man, you need a trust for that. It provides easier, more efficient administration of your state because everything's clearly defined. It prevents court interference at incapacity because even when you're in capacity, it goes right on into that trust as well when it's written that way. It gives you and your family maximum privacy by avoiding public court process. Listen, without this, if there are significant assets, they are publicized in some document, somewhere, some legal document that someone can see. And when they see it, they can come after it. That's part of the scam that's out there. It puts all your assets into one plan, controlled by one set of instructions that makes it easier for fair, equitable distribution of your beneficiaries. You, you decide, and you say 20%, 10%, you divide it. Why is this different from will? Because it, and an executor, a will and an executor is one thing, but your assets are not protected. They're still there. They're still out there. A trust puts everything in there. Remember, executor is going to decide how your will goes, but your trust is going to take all these assets and going to set them aside to be protected from the court. We'll talk about that again in a minute. It lets you keep your assets in your trust until the beneficiaries reach the ages you want them to inherit. You know, there's some kids that you don't want to inherit when they're 16. I mean, if you pass away and you know what's going to happen, he's going to take his share of the house and he's going to be driving a jacked up Dodge Ram truck with mufflers running along the side and an air scoop in the front of it. And even if he only owns it, owns it for a month, he or she's going to be happily spending all their money. You know, there's some folks you don't want to get the assets. And there's some you don't want to get them whether 40 or 50. Let me just share another story with you. I have a, a client that we were working with who wants to set up a family trust. 
because he was concerned that his son, who had divorced the mother of his children and gone to marry someone else, that when the mom and dad died, that the money would not be going where they wanted it to, to the wife who's raising the children, but it would be going to the son since he was the guy who was beneficiary. He was the blood child. And at his passing, everything would go to this other woman who would have nothing to do with them. How do you solve that problem? Man, well, families can be complicated, right? That's what a trust does. A trust says it will pass to him, but at his death, it passes here. And the trust controls it. Nobody else can speak up. That's the reason this is harder to break than changing provisions of will. One of the questions I've always asked is, Stan, can you write an unbreakable will? No, but a trust can put another wall of security around it. It lets you keep your assets in the trust until your beneficiaries are qualified and you name who they are and what age they get them. And it controls longer time for someone with special needs. You know, this can set it up for their lifetime. It, it's, a, it's a valuable document. And here's some other things it does. It allows the assets to remain in the trust and protected from your beneficiaries. Notice from their creditors. Wait, wait, I'm giving a, $200,000 to my son, and he owes $400,000 in student debt, they're going to take it? No. He has married a spouse? I don't know. The divorce is going to set this aside? His ex is going to get half? No. Listen, the trust is so important. It ends irresponsible spending and future death taxes. Just that first line alone, right, says why you need it. It prevents a court from controlling the inheritance of minor children. Remember what we said about dying intestate? That means without a will. And if you die without a will, the court's going to decide who gets your kids. Oh, my gosh. Then the court can say, well, here's the inheritance goes to the kids. The court can appoint a guardian. They can eat up your assets just by the fees. The court allows this attorney, who is a friend of the court, to charge to the estate. Gosh, you really want to be sure that you have a trust. It's far more difficult than a will to contest. Far more difficult. It provides effective prenuptial protection for those who have those kind of assets and concerned about that. It allows for changes or cancellation at any time. Why? Because it's revocable and you can change it anytime. It allows professional asset management. You can say the trustee is going to be not my brother, my bank your wife, you can say it's going to go to this trust department of this bank or this place to watch over. It lets you keep maximum control while you're living, even if you're incapacitated, you still keep control. And after you die, what does a trust do? Look at the last. My goodness. How much do people spend to get peace of mind? That's why this is important. You've taken care of things. Let me just tell you, there's a huge difference. And talking to a family where a mom or dad did everything and where a family gets together and said, if only mom had, if only dad had, don't let that happen in your family. Be sure that they understand. By the way, if you can't have the conversations, look in Talk again. Talk says how to have the conversations. I tell you in detail how to have the conversations because the biggest problem is most people don't have any knowledge about this because they don't know how to talk about it. That's why what you do is so very important. That's why I'm happy to be encouraging to you and help you know what you do is important. I told you when I worked for my 27 years in your business, I felt I was a missionary for money because too many Americans don't understand how money works and how money does not work. If you think you don't need a revocable living trust, you don't know how money works. And your family will know how it doesn't work when they see what happens. How does money not work? Well, if you leave your assets unprotected, that's not very smart, is it? If you leave your beneficiaries unprotected, wow. Why do you want to leave assets to someone where someone else can take it away from them? Why would you leave the court's responsibility for overseeing your assets? That's the last people in the world you want doing it. Not because they're dishonest, because they don't care. They can't. There's too many cases, too many times. 
Take it out of the courts. How does money not work? Boy, if you don't take the time before you're passing to save time after you're passing for those you love, money doesn't work. Let me just tell you the sad tale again. As you know, my brother Ron had stage four lung cancer. When we went to the hospital, he died in 41 days. He never left the hospital. He'd look out the window at his restored pickup truck and want to take a ride. He had fishing equipment in the back. He wanted to go. Things he wanted to do, kids he wanted to visit, grandkids, he never left the hospital. So while we were there, my younger brother had to complete a durable power of attorney for health care, a living will. He had to compete his HIPAA authorities. He had to do then his will, his last will and testament. And he did not do a revocable living trust. Why? Because they can cost three to $5,000 for sort of a basic one. 1500 if you get some guy to give you a discount. Didn't want to spend the money and frankly, we didn't know why he needed it. So here's the tragedy. One more minute for you to understand why I'm passionate about this. Ron had an insurance settlement of $300,000 plus other property. Because he didn't have a family trust, it was printed in legal documents somewhere that Ron had passed away and here was his assets for creditors to come claim. He didn't have any creditors, but he did have someone who read it in the paper and said, hey, wasn't that guy married to your mom at one time? An attorney said, I, I think I remember that. And he called them and said, hey, did you know your ex left $300,000 and I don't see any heirs listed here at all. It's 300,000 bucks. Wow. So we had two women come out of the woodwork claiming to be his loving adopted daughters. And it took two years to go through court two years to get that settled, two years to prove that they were crooks. Why two years? Because the court couldn't get around to it. Couldn't make the decision till two years. You know what that meant to his beneficiaries, to his wife and to his children and grandchildren? No assets, none, couldn't get them because it was tied up in court. I had to get court permission to write a basic check to cover basic expenses for his wife. And then she got pancreatic cancer. And when this was settled, half the money was gone to pay for the legal fees. And then she died. You do not want that to happen to anybody you know. Net law is not just something you're offering clients. It's a way you show love and compassion for people who are important to you. I want to talk about this today because it's a little bit complicated and yet it's not when you use net law. It's really important for you to know how this works. I'm glad you came today and you know that if any of this was not quite clear and sometimes I admit I may not be making it quite clear, you can make the easy become co less complicated. You can make the complicated become easy. The smart guy will fill in your documents in your client's name, and it will do the same with the, with the trust documents. Accessibility is there. See, the secret is you can have these documents done much more expensively by a local attorney, but no one will know where they are. Where do you store them? Listen, the secret of net law is not only that you can do this for your clients, make it simple and easy at less cost, but you could store them digitally. So there's always accessibility in the family vault, which is really important. When you talk about this, you help demonstrate how money works like a pro because we're making it easy for you. You know, we're trying to uncomplicate the complicated, make the difficult much, much easier and make the education a simple matter of bullet points. That's what we're trying to do at NetLaw, and I hope you're finding that to be true. This is the best thing of all. Mark, Vanessa, and Mary or Jennifer, they're there to help every day, every day. They'll talk to you or talk to your clients. Check out step six in the app store. Look 
for our NetLaw uh, dashboard right there where you're sitting on your computer. You're going to find so many great helps, so many great helps. And I hope you're finding that I'm one of those helps. I want to be. I uh, hope more and more of you will see that this can be a, an important thing to do to join us for these webinars every week. And tell your friends, join us on the webinar. Remember, most of us don't have a lot of time, but we set aside what's important. We all have the same amount of time, don't we? But it's how we organize our priorities that makes a difference. I'm Stan Craig, and I'm glad that today for you, this was one of your priorities. I guarantee you, it was one of mine. I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us.